And we can say hi to Meg. Hi, Meg. Hi, Meg. Hi, Meg. <laughs> that wasn't an enthusiastic hi, Meg. Okay, Casey, you got a pass? Uh, they didn't give me a pass. Can we go back to No, no, I got to talk to you guys later on about that. All right, a solution to a differential equation. So far, you haven't been finding them. You've been given them. Finding them is coming later in chapter 2. Now, uh, if we impose some initial condition, like plug in x equals 0, y equals negative 1, you could quickly find that your constant would be negative 1, and that particular solution would be y equals 1 all over x squared minus 1. And, of course, what you can notice, of course, is that that denominator would factor and uh, just like in pre-calculus and Algebra 2, and even in Algebra 1 for that matter, as you talk about domain, the big question is, do we break any rules of arithmetic, dividing by zero, for instance? Uh, yeah, that would be at positive 1 and negative 1. The domain of that function would be x could not equal plus or minus 1. We spoke of this before. We're talking of it again so that we can uh, really uh, make this plain. A solution is never going to be with the domain's uh, restrictions exactly. It has to pertain to uh, an interval that contains the initial condition. And our initial condition was x equals 0. Now, you could break up your x-axis, the number line, going from negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to 1, and from 1 to infinity. And uh, what we talked about before, what we mentioned yesterday, was that because the initial condition was x equals 0 in this problem, that, that's really what we're seeing uh, with y sub 0 here, we would have to have an interval from negative 1 to 1. Uh, so Solutions to differential equations are very, very importantly tied to intervals once you throw in an initial condition. So uh, that, that's really the important thing. You have to be differentiable, of course. You have to exist, but you have to contain your initial point. Now, uh, that's nothing new, but this sets up what we're about to talk about today. There are two fundamental questions that we have to deal with with an initial value problem. One, does a solution to the problem exist? First of all, is there even an answer to speak of? And then second of all, let's just say that we do have existence. Is it unique? In other words, is this like Tigger from Winnie the Pooh? Is this the only one? So as we you know, ponder that question, for existence, does the differential equation possess solutions? Do any solution curves pass through the initial point? For uniqueness, do we know that there's one and only one curve that would do that? We're going to try to come up with a test to tell. So let's go over to the second page. And first of all, just consider a problem. Here we go again. For the most part, they're telling you that you've got some solutions. And that will show up quite frequently. Consider this differential equation, dy dx is equal to xy to the 1 half. Now, guys, as soon as I see this right here, I'm going to think about some uh, guidelines uh, for uh, existence. I can tell you immediately that y to the 1 half is a square root. And uh, if I'm going to be dealing with drawing in tangent lines anywhere, and that's what dy dx really is talking about, I have to have y to the 1 half uh, existing. So what types of y values are we really dealing with? Positive and possibly zero, right? And, you know, so you look at that and you say, okay, well, yeah. It wouldn't make any sense for a solution curve uh, to contain the point uh, with a negative y value because that derivative wouldn't even exist at that solution point. 
But regardless, this is where we're going. There are two solutions to this differential equation that pass through the point. They're telling it to you. Y equals zero and y equals 1 over 16x to the 4th. Sometimes kids look at that and they're like, well, y equals 0, I think everybody agrees, would be pretty obvious, that's trivial. But help me out, if y equals 1 over 16x to the 4th, what is dy dx? Just proving this, this would be what? 1 fourth what? x cubed. So the question is, would this dy dx really equal xy to the one half. Well, dy dx, you could say, is over here. Would that equal x times, now your y is 1 x to the fourth. Let's take the square root. What's the square root of 1 /16th? That would just be what? 1 fourth. Hey, what's the square root of x to the fourth? That's x squared. You bet it works out. You bet it checks. So what they're saying is, hey, there are two solutions. What's the point? It's not a unique problem. This is not unique. There's more than one solution, even though the trivial solution sounds kind of silly. This is not unique. Are there solutions that work? Yeah. But it's not the one and only. So here's where we're moving on a little bit differently. Let's talk in general and see if there's a way that we could come about with a test to see if we have existence and uniqueness. Theorem, for the existence of a unique solution, when you have very simply, this theorem, please hear this, is strictly for the form that dy dx is equal to f of x comma y. You know, a function of x and y is on the right side. So x and y might occur simultaneously on the right side. But if dy dx is equal to that, and you have an initial point, how can we tell that we have uniqueness in existence? Here's how. Let r be a rectangular region in the xy plane, defined by the following inequalities. That x is between a and b, y is between c and d. So, look, here's what's going on, guys. I'll, I'll even draw a brief little picture here. Here's A, here's B for my X, here's C, here's D. What does that really mean? We've got this rectangle. Okay? And it contains a point X naught, Y naught. Okay? So, uh, here is our little rectangular region. So here's what this theorem is saying. Let's just say you've got your initial point, you've got some little box around it. If f of x comma y and, oh, look at this, multivariable calculus time. The partial derivative of f with respect to y. If f and the partial derivative of f with respect to y are both continuous, then there exists an interval centered at x naught. And here's another way to look at this graphically. Let's say that right over here is x naught. Who knows where this interval is precisely, but there's an interval. It might be something like this. Maybe this is interval i. Such that a unique function y of x defined on that interval satisfies the differential equation. So what are we seeing? If that right hand side, f of x comma y, is continuous on that region, on that rectangle, and if the partial derivative of f with respect to y is also continuous on that region, on that rectangle, then there is a unique solution guaranteed. Let's revisit what was happening. Note also right here, and this is huge. If you're not continuous, if you're not continuous, you still could have a solution, and it still might even be a unique solution. Uh, just because you fail continuity doesn't mean you can't say the negation that there is no uniqueness 
or there is no solution whatsoever, uh, we won't be able to say much of anything. It's just in the positive sense that's when we can guarantee something. So take a look here. Consider this previous example. And we can say, well, let's see, f of x, f of x comma y is x, y to the one half. Now from here, guys, you just said earlier that y must be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so we know that. Help me take the partial derivative of f with respect. Now notice what we're doing here. We have to take it with respect to y, don't we? What's the partial derivative of x, y to the one half with respect to y? Well, I hope we'd get this, right? Would we agree? x all over 2, y to the one half. Uh, tell me something. Do we exist at y equals 0? Are we continuous at y equals 0 here? No, this is not continuous. at y equals 0. By the way, really, this unique point is what you want to investigate. What does this mean? It means that we are not guaranteed, we're not guaranteed a unique solution. There might be one. In fact, we're not even guaranteed a solution at all. In fact, there are two of them. But when you fail, when either the original function or the partial derivative of f with respect to y is not continuous at that order here, that initial condition, frankly, all we do is we look at this and we say, well, we don't know. But let's take a look at this next one. f of x comma y the right-hand side, is y to the one-half. And here we have 3 comma 4. So are we continuous at y equals 4? That's maybe the big, big question. What do you think? Yes. Okay, let's take a partial derivative of f with respect to y. What do we get now? 1 over 2, y to the 1 half. Are we continuous at y equals 4? Yeah. What do we know? Therefore, there is a unique solution. To this problem. That's all we're saying. We are going to learn in the future how to go about finding it. But that's all we're doing today, just graphing up. So very often you're going to have to check continuity of f, continuity of the partial derivative of f with respect to y, uh, and you might be able to say that you've got uniqueness and existence. So that's it. Uh, let's get started on some work here.